Greetings and salutations and welcome to Illegitimate Legends, the show where I like to talk about some of the more unusual League of Legends builds. And this build is a variation of a build that was sent in by a fan for Nasus. This is sort of a blue Nasus build, or as I like to call it, Mananasus. Mananasus? Manassus. I can't say it right right now, but it's mana and then ns. So that's a thing. Anyway, the theory behind this build is essentially Nasus can benefit very, very much from mana. He, particularly in the early game, doesn't have massive reserves of mana nor mana regeneration, and consequently, he finds himself in this tight little spot where he wants to be queuing constantly, but to do so leaves him vulnerable to attack. He can end up very, very dry if you don't have early mana regeneration in some form and consequently finds himself, if he's attacked, unable to do anything. At the same time, his Q is typically on cooldown, meaning that his big hitter is not available. So unless you're at higher levels, level 6, or unless you're fairly conservative with your farming, which is a strange concept on a champion that's designed to be building infinite amounts of power, unless you're conservative, you can't make offensive plays and don't have many defensive ones other than your W. This build, once you hit about level 4 and after you get the specific core items, the starting items to this build, doesn't suffer that problem whatsoever. In addition, it adds a massive amount of synergy and allows you to make skill orders that are otherwise not viable. And these skill orders leave you exceptionally powerful at level 7. Level 7, you will win almost any 1v1 fight. Almost hands down. There are, however, problems typical with a Nasus, but I'll go into those later. So let's break down the build. I haven't got a clue what items to start with. I honestly don't know. But I can tell you the eventual goal. The eventual goal is to have a Mana Mute. Also have Boots and have an Essence Reaver. That's the new item for AD champions that gives 80 AD, lifesteal, and in addition, when you auto-attack, you restore 2 to 8% of your maximum mana based on how much mana you are missing. You're starting to get the idea because that mana immune's a thousand mana once it levels up to Mura Mana. And the Essence Reaver, 8% of a thousand mana is a massive amount. And you auto-attack a lot. You know what else is cool? Your Q counts as an auto-attack. It will refresh its mana cost just by being used. Throw in the synergy of a mirror mana in that it adds mana to your strikes. 2% of your maximum mana is added as magic damage to your hits, which in turn is also added onto your Q. Leaves you with a very powerful Q and the mana to do it forever. The item that you want to be getting somewhere later down the line is an Archangel Staff. Purely because I commit to a gimmick. If I'm if I'm running a gimmick, I'm gonna commit 110% to that. And so an Archangel Staff into Seraph's Embrace is the decision that I went for. At the end of the day, I think that's the right decision to make. It amplifies your damage, amplifies the amount of mana you're getting back from Essence Reaver, gives you a massive amount of AP for a single item. You hit about 150 AP at the end of this build really weird, and but it does have its uses. It's adding about 3% damage over time to your ult. It's adding massive amounts of damage to your spirit fire. It's, it's generally useful, and more importantly, once you get it to Seraph's Embrace, it gives you a lot of extra health in the form of a temporary shield that consumes a massive amount of your mana. But like I've said, mana for Nasus in Manassus stops becoming a resource and starts becoming a stat. It amplifies all your other skills and isn't actually consumed faster than it's replenished. And that's the core philosophy. And then, because you want cooldown reduction and other nice things, you get yourself an Iceborne Gauntlet and also a Frozen Heart. This combination of abilities leaves you with a damage Nasus build. Your Q hits like a massive truck absolutely huge cues. You will often find that you one-shot enemy champions, particularly as you progress toward the late game. And in the early game, particularly if you rush towards that Essence Reaver, you'll find that you'll be able to be leveling, and this is how I played it, level your Q and E equally. That's kind of counterintuitive, particularly from first, first step out of base. You don't have the mana to sustain that. 
but once you've got the Essence Reaver, what you'll be doing is you'll be farming your Q constantly and poking the enemy down, keeping them away from minions because they don't want to go into your Spirit Fire. It's not necessarily the most damaging ability, but it is significant amount of damage. If they stand in it, it's 100 to 200 damage that they'll be taking over its duration, and it leaves them vulnerable to even minion hits, because it reduces armor by a substantial amount. Throw in that you've got a lot of AD, and any fight that occurs, they will initiate on you. You don't want to initiate on them, but you'll throw down your spirit fire and cue them in the face for tons of damage. Massive amounts of damage, all because you've shredded their armor and then hit them with as much physical damage as you can. And that's great. It's wonderful amounts of damage. You would think that Nasus would lose to a lot of champions. He basically does. He's fairly vulnerable. And there's a lot of champions that this build isn't viable against, but champions like Riven, who I can confirm definitely beat me, they definitely beat me in lane the first fight. I came back with Spirit Fire ready, and with enough mana to last forever, and I kicked her ass. I died once that girl, she died three times immediately afterwards, because she couldn't stay near the minions. Anytime she went for farm, I'd drop a Spirit Fire down and cure her face. And even if she counterattacked, she's already taken enough damage that I've won that engage. Of course, I was lucky in that she was dumb enough to stick around with less than 50 health against a player carrying Ignite, but, you know, I'm not going to say that it didn't work before then to leave her on 50 health. That's the theory behind it. But of course, like every build, and more importantly like every gimmick build, it has some massive pitfalls. And they're basically identical to any other Damage Nasus build. Damage Nasus finds himself with the ability to one-shot most squishy champions, or two-shot as the case may be. It varies depending on who you're hitting and how effectively you've been farming over the course of the game. But his early game is not very strong because you want to be incredibly passive and certain champions will hard counter you very, very easily. Lee Sin kicked my ass, particularly because I was building an obscure starting set which builds very well into the late game, getting that goddess tier immediately. It's potent eventually. It's not potent at the start, and if you're up against a champion with amazing levels of engage and the ability to slap your face around, like the Lee Sin or Xin Zhao, and there's a wide variety of other champs on top who could do it, you won't be able to compete effectively, and at this point you should consider not playing out the particular build that you've got planned, not playing as Mana Nasus and converting yourself into something else, taking more defensive items and building for the tank Nasus. The other pitfall with a physical Nasus is that any champion who can successfully kite away from you has already won the fight. You don't have enough health, you will die very, very quickly, and essentially your goal in a team fight is run in and immediately kill one person, preferably an AD carry. Wither in, Spirit Fire, Q, dead AD carry. Then try and survive off a combination of your lifesteal and your ultimate, constantly drawing health from the enemies, not in the term of lifesteal, but in the term of damage, which then adds to your lifesteal. Draw power from them and then Q as many people as you can, preferably squishy targets. Eliminating one and dealing as much damage before your team goes in as possible. And if you're not the focus of the enemy team, then go to town on their squishies. You will typically die on killing or seriously maiming your second target. That's a two for one. That is considered worth. Luckily, this build kind of negates the squishiness eventually with the Seraph's Embrace. But at the same time, that's not going to be enough to save your sorry ass. You will die a lot in team fights, but will you, you will go one for one or greater. However, you'll also find, like any other Nasus build, you've got a lot of strengths. Your pushing ability is absurd. Okay, so you're you're with your minions and they're up against a minion wave. Just two lanes of creeps hitting each other. Drop down Spirit Fire, start queuing away for the last hits. You're building up damage, and at the same time, your lane is pushing very, very, very quickly. You get to a tower. Three queues later, the tower is gone in the endgame. That is the power of a Nasus build that bases itself around damage. You can wreck towers. You can push a lane very, very quickly, and you'll often find yourself in the situation where you're pushing and there's a team fight going on. Your team is playing the defensive. Don't be. Now, yes, this is 
something that decision making is very, very important. You need to decide if you're needed with your team or if you're needed to push. But odds are, if your team can make a good defensive in and hold the enemy for 20 seconds, in that 20 seconds, you'll be able to take two towers. Maybe not quite two, but certainly one, and then start on the second. Otherwise, if you be, that 20 seconds goes to you being, 10 seconds to be, and approximately five to seven seconds to get back into lane, depending on how far out the fight is occurring defensively. So, which is more valuable to you? One and a half towers, or the ability to get to a defensive that might not still be there, when you return to base. It's up to you to decide exactly how you're gonna play that out, but pushing the lane is Nasus, and you can take an entire base if the enemy isn't paying enough attention, and nothing can stop you. You slap towers around like they're not even there. Squishy champions? Look, I'm pushing a tower, Twitch rocks up, decides to pop everything on me and wreck me. I Q him once, once, one Q, Twitch is dead. Continue pushing the tower, don't even give a fuck. That's a mana Nasus build. It's very blue, it lacks in magic resistance and general survivability. But at the same time, it's got a massive amount of damage output that climbs constantly over the course of the game as you're generating more and more mana. Once your build is finally finished, and it'll finish fairly early although items will still be stacking, your damage continues to climb because Q is Q and continues to get stronger. You've got the ability to slow large amounts of a team fight with the fact that you've got an Iceborne Gauntlet, as well as the fact that your Frozen Heart is already slowing the attack speed of everybody involved. Your Wither is of course an amazing tool which should be used to completely negate the damage of whoever's got the highest attack speed. And your Q will one shot, or two shot as the case may be, but you'll have enough damage to make significant impacts on the game if you can pick off the enemy champions. Don't run into the front line, maybe try and find your way around the back, but if you can do that, you can cause so much devastation the enemy team will lose the fight. And that's the basic idea behind this build. It worked reasonably well, I didn't win a single game, but I did go one for one in almost all of them. I blame feeders, because people going 0 and 19 bottom, or 0 and 19 top when I was mid, well, it has a negative impact on the final score. But at the same time, this build is only semi-viable. It's good in some circumstances, but consider your other Nasus options before you commit to it fully. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time for another Illegitimate Legends. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the new format, starting with theory, working into pros and cons, and finishing with a rounded out conclusion of the build. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I do like to hear your thoughts, and more importantly, I want to hear what builds you would like me to be doing. I am running short on ideas myself, and so I'm taking recommendations quite freely. And of course, good night. It's all right. Don't worry, I'm coming. She plays the ward. She plays the ward. She plays the ward. I'm both done. Where is he? Okay. You got balls, boy. <laughs> it's the net. <laughs> what did you just do? Did you just resist what? the hand? What? You what? just resisted the hand. <laughs> The leap resists everything. No, but it doesn't. Usually it, it just... Apparently it does. <laughs> leap counters hand. You're just like, no, you can't have this.